ಭದ್ರಂ ಕರ್ಣೇಭಿ ಶೃಣಯಾವೇವಾ ಭದ್ರಂ ಪಶ್ಯೇವಾಕ್ಷಭಿರ್ಯಜತ್ರ ಸ್ಥಿರೈರಂಗೈಸ್ತುಷ್ಟುವಾಗಂಸ್ತನೂಭಿ ವ್ಯಶೇಮ ದೇವಹಿ ತಂಯದಾಯು ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನ ಇಂದ್ರೋ ವೃದ್ಧಶ್ರವಾ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನ ಕೂಷಾ ವಿಶ್ವೇದ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನಸ್ತಾಕ್ಷೋ ಅರಿಷ್ಟನೇಮಿ ಸ್ವಸ್ತಿ ನೋ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿರ್ದೂ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ದಿಸ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ನಾರದ ಮಹರ್ಷೀಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ on how to practice constant recollection of god many sages have given instructions on this important topic over many centuries we can choose just those instructions that suit our needs match our temperament and the abilities everything is not meant for every body everything is not suitable for every body but we have to make that choice with some guidance if necessary from somebody so now we turn our attention to chaitanya mahaprabhu's instructions chaitanya mahaprabhu lived about 550 years ago one of the greatest teachers of bhakti and the main discipline that Chaitanya Prabhu emphasized was what Pralada had said Kirtana but Narada had said Abhyavata Bhajanam uninterrupted practice of chanting God's name God's name has the has the power to transform our lives if we constantly practice chanting god's name as we saw this morning it can be done in different ways if you say if you repeat the same name over and over again or a mantra then we call it japa or we can chant different names in the form of Shasrana, Shasranama, Ashtotra, Trishati, etc. And many other kinds of hymns are also available as we saw this morning. Hymns, Vedic hymns occurring in the Vedas, hymns occurring in the various Puranas. We saw many examples of this. And hymns occurring in the epics, Ramayana Mahabharata, and hymns composed by various <coughs> sages teachers in different languages in different parts of india over a period of many centuries still that that system is continuing we can choose any particular hymn that appeals to us that we can chant They all these are different ways that we can adopt to practice constant recollection of God. That is the idea. Practice constant recollection, constant remembrance. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu emphasized the importance of chanting God's name, repeating God's name, Harer Nam. That was the main discipline he practiced and he taught also. So it's number 69, chanting the name of God is the way for this age. Harer nama harer nama harer nama eva kevalam kalau nastyeva 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 gatiranyatha In this Kali Yuga, kalau means in this Kali Yuga, life has become very complex. Just to make a living takes so much effort. and time and energy and other complications have 
entered into our lifestyle. So amidst all of these complexities of daily life, we have to find time to chant God's name, Hare Nam, God's name. It has the power. As we shall see in the next passage, God's name has the power to purify our minds, make our minds one-pointed, directed towards God, and transform our lives and take us only way to the ultimate goal of illumination. There is only one single discipline, independent and complete in itself. This total complete spiritual discipline is chanting God's name. The name of the God has the power. That is in number 7. Nam Nam Kai Bahuda Nijasar Vashakti Tatra Pita Nemitas Marane Nakala Eta Drushi Tava Prapa Pagavan Mama Pi Durdaiva Mida Simiha Jenina Duraga O Lord Bhagavan, where is all the names revealed by thee? into which thou hast in infused thy omnipotent powers. Sri Ramakrishna also said, the name of God is same as God, Nam or Nami Hak. The direct, simplest way to bring God into our minds is to chant His name. Nothing can be simpler than that, easier than that. It has that Shakti, that power. To chant God's name, there is no particular rule. There are a lot of rules, requirements for doing other kinds of spiritual practices. If you want to do some puja or vrata, like the Satyanarana vrata, if you want to do or some other particular kind of puja you have to do, then there are procedures to be followed rules to be followed. But for chanting God's name, there is no restriction of time or place. Anywhere, anytime, in any condition, you can chant God's name. There is nothing that is simpler than that one. Yutra Arpita Neme Dasmaranena Kala To remember God to chant His name, there is no special requirement. Wherever you are, in whatever condition you are, you can chant God's name. That's how simple it is. Though the simplest means is available, method is available, we don't make use of it. That is the regret that Chaitanya is expressing. Such is thy mercy, O Lord, that have infused your name with your power. But such is my misfortune that I, in this life I have no devotion to give you. I spend a lot of time in other parts. We saw yesterday Shankaracharya's three distractions. Remember that one? Earlier it came. Loka Anuvartanam, Deha Anuvartanam, Shastra Anuvartanam. Loka Anuvartanam occupies lot of our time and energy, worldly concerns, what is happening, where, who is doing what, so many distractions, entertainment, sports, movies, and uh, all those things, politics, stock market, so many things to occupy our mind all the time. And little, what a lot, lot of time goes in Dehan Vartanam, food is the main distraction. Kaliyuge Annagata Prana, Sri Ramakrishna said, lot of time, energy, resources are spent on food, what to eat, all those things. Do it as student, all lot of things. All TV shows are there about food. All the time they are showing how to prepare food, all those things. So, TV channels are there. So much distraction about that. 
what dress to wear, what car to drive, what food to eat, where to go, what movie to see, like this one. Then if any little time is left, some people do Shastranavartanam, that is scholarly study of scriptures for acquiring scholarship. Scholarship, as Shankara said, does not lead to liberation. It can bring worldly benefits, it can bring fame, recognition, rewards, but it does not do much more than that one. Mm -hmm. Some people uh, take a lot of pride in their ability to speak fluently, give lectures and talks and explain scriptures in very nice language, impressive language. But that kind of scholarship is of limited use. In the Vekathodamani Shankara says, Vagvai Khari Shabdha Jari Shastra Vyakya Nakaushalam Vaidushyam Vidusham Tadvad Bhuktaye Natu Muktaye Vidusham Vaidushyam, the scholarship of scholars is for Bhukti, not for Mukti. Bhukti means worldly benefits. Fame will come, money may come, rewards may come, recognition may come. Mukti will not come. So that too much of that is unnecessary. As we saw this morning, scripture study is necessary. Swadhyaya so, is necessary. Daily we have to do. Scripture say Swadhyaya should be done. Swadhyaya na pramarita vyam. Repeatedly Taitiri Upanishad says Swadhyaya is to be done. Swadhyaya pravachana vyam na pramarita vyam that we have seen before. But what is the purpose? Why is scriptures have to be studied? What should be done? Narada said that the last passage we studied this morning. In 68, Narada said, devotional scriptures have to be studied. Bhakti Shastra Nimanani Yani. Then we have to put into practice what these scriptures ask us to do. Otherwise, reading scriptures is for scholarship. What makes a difference in our lives is what we actually do. How much we follow the instructions given in the scriptures. So merely studying scriptures for case sake of scholarship is not beneficial. Our Shrutis, our Upanishads say both things. Both things are mentioned in the Upanishads. Upanishads say every day you have to study scripture. So Upanishad also says by Swadhyaya Pravachana, you will not be able to achieve God. Tata Upanishad says, Nayam Atma Pravachana Na Labhya Very bold statement. Simply by reading Swadhyaya Pravachana, doing that one, you will not be able to achieve Atma Jnana. What is to be done? Reading the scriptures and putting into practice what instruction the scriptures ask us to do. That is what brings his all. Sri Ramakrishna explains this with the help of a parable. A person gets a message on a piece of paper from his friend in some other village. This was before the days of internet and iPhone and all those people had to send messages to the bus conductor and driver. That may please give this message, piece of paper to my friend like that. Even the postal system was not available everywhere. So he gets the message. The friend is asking him to send one share of some days and one pair of dhoti for some celebration. The person who receives it, what he should do? He should read the message to know what is required to be done. And then he should get those things, go to the bazaar market, by the uh, share of Sandesh and Dhoti that person is requesting, then send it to somebody else going to that village. Instead of doing that, if the person keeps on reading the message every day, please send one share of Sandesh and one pair of Dhoti like this one, then person is waiting there for that one. That is uh, absurd situation, we should not do like that. 
शास्त्रास और लेख रेसिपी बुक्स स्क्रिप्चर्स और लेख रेसिपी बुक्स और रोड मैप्स If you read the road map, then you have to get it to the car and start driving, following the instructions. If you keep on reading the instructions or memorizing the map, then you are not taking any step. You are sitting in your own house, driveway. You don't get anywhere that way. If you want to go somewhere where you want to go, then follow the instructions and start the traveling. That is why instructions. In the given the scriptures have to be put into practice. That's the purpose of studying the shastras. Then Chaitanya's instruction was not to study shastra. That Narada said shastra, but Chaitanya said more practical. Don't have to read many shastras. Just repeat God's name, simplest practice. That will take you the ultimate goal, result. So we go to the. Uh, next uh, passage, all this from Shikshashtaka. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu composed a hymn called Shikshashtaka. Ashtaka means hymn containing eight stanzas. Like Shatkam means hymn containing six stanzas. Panchakam means hymn containing five, five stanzas. Sadhana Panchakam, Nirvana Shatkam. Then Shikshastakam, like this. So, it's not just there. He gives instructions on how to chant God's name. Not a complicated process. Anybody can. You don't have to even read any book to do that. Do that one. One instruction he says: We have to chant God's name with much humility and yakulata, learning for learning for God, not with pride. I am chanting God's name. I am doing 1,000 japa every day, morning, evening. That pride should not be there. Hum, humility, humble. Chanting God's name. This in 71. Trina de pisuni chena taro de pisagishnuna amanina mana de na kirtani yes sada hari sada hari kirtani ya always. We have to chant Hari's name, God's name, any name of your choice. How? Three things. Trunada pi suni chena. You humbler than a blade of grass. Trunada is blade of grass growing. It is given an example of humility. Humble like that, but not with pride. Taro or pi sahish nuna taro means. Tree. 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 Tree is often cited as an example of forbearance, titiksha. Tree stands there in open space, rain or shine, snow or wind, it bears everything without complaining. Still gives its fruits and whatever, it gives flowers, whatever. More forbearing than a tree. The roar of Isaishtona. Third quality is without claiming respect for oneself, but giving respect to everybody. Amani na mana de na. Amani na means claiming respect for one. See, I'm look at me. I'm such a great devotee. I do so much japa every day. People should respect me. That expectation should not be there. I am very humble person. Humility must be there. But we have to give respect to everybody. Mahana that means one who gives respect to others. Whomever we see, or whatever we see, animals or plants or things, we have to show respect because, as we saw this morning on yesterday, in everything he resides. Yesterday we studied this one. Whatever object is there in this creation. Moving or unmoving, that is the union or combination of two components. What are they? The material, physical component called Kshetra. Don't remember thirteen chapter of the Gita. Don't forget thirteen chapter of the Gita. <laughs> remember, don't forget. Second component. 
the physical part we see through the mind and sense organs does not exhaust the object if you see somebody what do we notice when we see somebody we notice the outer aspects of the personality what dress he or she is wearing what language he or she speaks what work he do, he does engineer or uh, it software or um, lawyer what those things we see what drive, car he is driving what food he eats these kind of things we see these are all the physical changing characteristics of the personality these things will change they come and go but this the physical personality does not exhaust that being there is something much more to that person than what needs the eye what you see from the outside that is the spiritual component there is a spiritual component in everything animate or inanimate even in this chair on this earth in air in water in the river in sun in the star in the moon in the good person the bad person the wicked person the saintly person male female young old all have that one spiritual component is common to all this one stotra uh, one one shloka that comes i think a shweta shatara upanishad swami vivekananda quote in the shloka it says a person who can see divine presence in all is he is seeing the divine presence he says i see god in you all we can do that too it takes a lot of effort and time but can be done should be done that person says tom stri tam pumanasi tam kumar utava kumari tam jirno dande navanchasi tam jato bhavasi vishvato mukha shita shita rakshya the person who can see god in all he says o oh lord tom stri you come in the female form all women are devis the chandi also says that stri asamasta sakala jagat so chandi started in navaratri now 11th chapter of chandi 5th 6th shloka vidya samasta steva devi bheda stri asamasta sakala jagat su in whole world all female members not only men women everybody is she herself in that form she is there in all so stri tam pum manasi in all men god is present for man for god there is no distinction between man and woman that's our in our minds we have the distinction but he is present in all same sarveshu bhuteshu samam tishtantam parameshwara tam kumara utava kamari whether he is looking at a boy or a child or a girl he is there in them tam jirno dande namanchasi if you see a old man jirna with the, worn out body dande nevanchasi he walks using a staff or a walker or walking stick slowly in him also the same divine presence is there tam jato bhavasi vishvato mukha all faces are his face. this one is this morning in much detail all hands are god's hands sarvata pani param that's what The shloka comes in the Shoda Sutra Upanishad in Bhagavad Gita 13:13. All these things tell us one thing. That means, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, "Amani na man dera." That for second part of the first line, whomever we see, whatever we see, need not be human being, any object, any being that we see, we have to give respect. Treat that object, that person, or animal, or plant, or tree, or a, even a small object, with gentleness and kindness and respect. One day, when Sri Ramakrishna was in Dakshineshwar, Hari Maharaj went there. Now, Hari Maharaj, who Hari Maharaj was, hmm? Swami Turiyananda, Hari hmm? Nachchitra Padhyay. Young man at that time, before he became uh, sadhu, so he went to visit Sri Ramakrishna. He, which was evening time. So when Sri Ramakrishna saw Hari, 
Und nicht wie dem so mit Turi an. Das ist die Yogi. So, Thakur said to Hari Hari, I have a small assignment for you. Will you do? Yes, sir. This morning some people came here to three amidst Dakshineshwar. They want they were doing a picnic here. And they borrowed a knife from here. The picnic people forgot to bring the knife. They went to Thakur and asked, Can you give a knife or bring you back in the evening? Thakur gave the knife. And they said they would bring it back after the picnic and give it turn to Thakur. So they, they agreed. They took the knife. And the evening they did return the knife. So Hari came. Sri Ramakrishna said, See if they are still there. What happened to the knife? We need that knife. So Hari goes to the picnic spot in Dakshineshwar. There was nobody there. People had left leaving all the litter, newspaper packet in which they packed food in India. Everything was there. The knife was also lying there, used but not cleaned. They forgot. Careless. Use this somebody's thing, you have to return to somebody promptly after you are using it. Then you do it. So Hari picked up the knife, cleaned it, took it to Sri Ramakrishna's room and kept it someplace where he thought it was a nice place. Thakur noticed that one. He calls Hari, say, Hari, that is not the place where you have to keep the knife. And for everything in this room, the place has been fixed. It has to be kept in the same place after use, after cleaning. That instruction we have to do and tell our children. Everything in the household or wherever, in their bedroom or some place, has to be given a place and after using the same thing has to be kept in the same place. So, Sri Ramana told Hari, keep it in the place assigned to it. The reason was, those days there was no electricity. Now in the middle of the night, if you get up, we turn the switch on. And then you can see what is where. But uh, in Dakshineshwar, those days, there was no electricity. If you get up in the middle of the night, where will you look for something in its place? It has to be predictable. Practical value, practical uh, aspect of it. Spiritually also, everything has to be kept in the same place. So we have to respect everything, even a knife or an inanimate object. In Holy Mother's household in Jairamati, you remember that incident. One person swept the floor using a broom, jadu. And after sweeping the floor, she kept the jadu someplace carelessly, she put it aside. Mother noticed that part. Mother told that lady, see, he used the broom to sweep the floor. And after using it, you simply threw it away someplace that is not right for two reasons. One reason is, one reason is your experience, practically. Next time when you want to use the broom, you will have to look for it all over the place. If you keep it in the same place, it's predictable you can reach for, uh, reach for it there. You don't have to search everywhere. Everything has a place in the household. One reason, practical experience. Second reason is this broom also is has the same spiritual dimension we have. You remember Sri Krishna said in the Gita, Shloka 26 in chapter 13, yesterday we spent a lot of time on that one. Whatever is there in this creation, animate or inanimate, has a spiritual component in it. Even the knife, even the broom. You have to recognize that one. You have to treat these objects in the same way as we treat a person. So, Yavat Sandhavayate Kinchit Sattvam Stavara Jangamam Then, Kshetra Kshetra Gyasam Yogat Taddhiti Varitasya. Remember the shloka. That you have to remember. That's the basis for treating everything with respect. Amanina Manajana, he said here. That is the basis for that. 
So you have to connect these ideas. That is what giving respect to everybody, being humble, Trunadipi Sumi Chena, being forbearing, Tavurupi Saishnana, not claiming importance, respect for oneself, giving respect to everybody else, to everything else. Second idea, Sri Krishna uh, Chatinema Prabhu said, you have to have this intense yearning, Vyakuleta, Sri Ramakrishna called Vyakuleta, to see God. If very mild and moderate it is, to be, it has to be intensified. So he says, how intense the Vyakuleta must be to know God. Yuga itam nimeshena chakshusha pravrsha itam Shunya itam jagat sarvam govinda viraheena me Viraha means separation. Govinda viraha means if I don't remember God for nimesha means twinkling of an eye. You should constantly remember God but if you forget God for a short period of time when you remember again, we should feel this remorse. How uh, foolish of me to have forgotten you for such a long period of time. I missed you so much. We should, we should feel that, that you have missed something. Then the feeling of missing something, which we like very dearly, somebody dear to us, if we don't see them for some time, we feel for how long we have not seen like that. Huh? Your closest friend, your, your child is away for a few days or a few weeks. And when the child comes back or, or you meet your friend who is very dear to you, you feel the intensity, the separation. How long I have not seen you? In Hindi, they have a very expressive uh, expression. Muddat ke aapke darshan ho rahe hai. This. The only time four days ago, but four days looks like four years because you love that person so much. <laughs> like that. Your child goes to college. Now people are going to college after high school. And the father is beginning of September. You used to see them every day. They were living in you, with you in, uh, until they were going to high school. But I don't know any parent who does not go to the attendee room that even I am in Christ. I talk to many parents. The separation is there. The child is so beloved. And when the child comes back for vacation on Thanksgiving, seven, eight, eight weeks later, he feels so good for a long time. You missed, I missed you so much like this, the parent says to the child. So that's the separation. You are with them, Nimesh, you know. Nimesh means even if we don't remember God, separation from God, go in the world for a short period of time, looks like a long yoga age, ages, as if ages have passed since I last remembered you. That must be the intensity of yearning. Chakshusha pravar shayitam As if monsoon season has started, copious tears of separation flow from the eyes. The separation is felt so keenly. People cry when they see somebody after a long time. Chunyavaitam jagat sarvam Without the dear person, Everything else is there, everything is, whole world seems to be empty. Like that. If we don't have one thing that we very dearly like, everything else we have, but nothing else makes any sense or meaning. Whole world is there, everything is there, only that one person is missing that gives us so much unhappiness, sadness. <coughs> the whole world appears empty. Let us have a mission. Without God, world has no substance at all. Sri Ramakrishna said, God is like the one behind the zeros. If you have one zero, amounts to nothing, no value. Two zeros, still zero. Ten zeros, still zero. But if you put one behind the first zero, every zero has value. So God is the one behind the world. What makes everything meaningful? Appealing to us is the presence of God in everything. Why we like each other? We may like each other for various outer reasons. But real reason is 
the presence of God in me, the presence of God in you is the same God. That is the attraction. That is explained in the Bhadaranyak Upanishad. That you are explains to Maitreji. Why does the husband love a wife so dearly? Why does the wife love the husband? We think it is for beauty reasons, etc. No. The, the true attraction is the self, same self in both of them. Navare Patyuka Maya Patish Priyo Bhavati Atmastuka Maya Patish Priyo Bhavati for the sake of the Atman. Same Atman is present in all, one Atman, no plural. That is what attracts to us to each other. Same thing about children, same thing about property, same thing about everything we have. Because the presence of the divine, this one brings us together, attracts each, each of us together. So without that God's presence in our mind, our whole mind becomes empty, our whole world appears empty. This describes the intensity of yearning, Yakulita. To remember God constantly, without forgetting even for a short period of time. In translation you can be in 71. When you go to page 12. When we pray to God, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, What we should ask from God? You can ask many things from God. In the Bhagavad Gita, Chapter 7, Sri Krishna says, People worship me for many different reasons. People worship God for many different reasons, motivations. He says, Chatur Vida Bhajante Maam Jana Supriti Naur Jana Jana Shloka. We are all Gita students. We study Gita here. Shloka 16, Chapter 7. Four kinds of people, Chutuvida Jana Maam Bajante, Chartare Kerog Mehdi Puja Karte. Who are they? Artho, Artha, Jignasu, Artharthi, and the last one is Yani. Artha is well, the person who is in distress. Sarvasi Artha Kare Devi Narayan in the hospital. Artha means distress. Artha is a person who is some problem. Health problem, financial problem, family problem, children problem, parent problem, husband wife problem, job problem, so many. We pray to God, oh God, this problem is there, please help me, like this. That kind of prayer is Artha's prayer, it's good. Say Krishna says it's okay, you can pray to God. He says it's okay. Jignya also, who is taking knowledge of God. Artha, who seeks money or something, material object. Somebody wants a job, he prays to God. Somebody uh, uh, does, does not have a child, they pray to God. Somebody uh, wants to marry, they pray to God. Somebody wants visa to go to America, they pray to God. You know, there is a visa in Kateshwara, <laughs> somewhere in Hyderabad. It is so popular, everybody applies for visa, they go to the temple with the application, in Kateshwara temple. The Venkateshwara specializes in granting visas. Hmm? And when they get the visa, they give again, go there and go up to there or something. Now the temple has become so popular, I thought they have opened some branches in other places. Visa <laughs> <laughs> Venkateshwara temple, they are not joking, it's true. Somebody went to that, or not the temple came and told me, yes, it is there, I she had been there. This person had been there, we such it. So we pray to God for visa. So what is wrong? Is it good or bad? What does Sri Krishna say about this kind of prayer? He says it's okay. Chatubhita Vajan Thema, Jana Sukhartina. Sukhartina means these are people are doing the right work, right deed. Sukhartina. Arthodha, etc. Udhara Sarva Evaite. All these you are noble people because you are worshipping God. Even if you are God for visa or a child or a promotion or a husband or wife, Still worshipping God, that itself is a good thing to worship. For whatever reason you worship God, that is a good thing. Udara Savate. But later on, in the 18th chapter, he says the opposite. You remember what he says in 18th chapter? Shloka number 2. Make a note of this one. 
Devi says, asking God for anything is not good. Theory said is okay. That will be the right thing. So when we go to 18th chapter from 7th chapter, that means when a person's devotion becomes mature and free from desires, when Sharanagati comes, acceptance of God's will comes, God's will will come, then no asking. Whatever he gives without my asking, with that I am happy. I am not going to ask God for this and that. I used to be for, but now I know this, this one, one level of one devotion, but I have come to the conclusion, I don't need to ask for anything from God. Whatever he gives without asking, a prarthita. Yadru chala vasantushto, like that one, Bhaktas Lakshana. Whatever comes with that, I am happy. I am not going to ask for this and that. That maturity has come. That Saranagati has come. By the time you go to the church, there he says, Kamyanam karmanam jnasam sanyasam kavayo viduhu. Kamya karma means any kind of puja, worship, karma that you do expecting some result. Motivated by desire, karma. That will have been given up by that time. That is maturity in devotion. So at this stage it is okay to ask. It depends upon where we are in our lives. So, Satini Mahapurva said, don't ask for anything. That, that's what we are going to study, 72, page 12. Satini Mahapurva says, when you pray to God, best is not to ask for anything. So he says, Nadanam Nadanam Nasundarim Kavitam Vajagati Shakamaye Mama Janmani Janmani Sware Bhavatad Bhakti Rai Tuki Tvai Jan Mama Janmani Janmani In all my births, in this birth and next birth if I have to take In all those future births also Tvai Ishwari O Jagadisha O Lord of the Universe in you Vahetuki Bhakti Bhavata May I have pure devotion Not devotion motivated by desire or fear or anything. Pure devotion, no seeking. Pure devotion, no seeking. Intense devotion. May I have that kind of devotion? For that only we have to ask. When we ask something for God, we should ask only for pure bhakti, pure devotion, not for any other worldly object. Nadanam kamaye. You should not ask, give me more money like that one. God for money. The Janam Kamaya, we should not ask for people. The Sundarim Kamaya, we should not ask God for some spouse. People do these things. But maturity of devotion, Chaitanya says, when you pray to God, don't ask for these things. Say, say to God, Bhagavan, I don't want any of these things. Please uh, note in this context, Sri Ramakrishna's prayer for pure devotion in the gospel. Very famous passage in the Kathamrita. There he says, Sri Ramakrishna Thakur says, praying to Divine Mother Ma Amitama Sharanagata Sharanagato Tama Shipada Padesh Sharanila Ma Deha Sukha Chayana Ma Anibhati Ashta Siddhi Chayana Deha Sukha Chayana Ma Loka Mandra Chayana Kema Leko Rajeno Tama Shipada Padesh Shuddha Bhakti Hoi Amala Ahivitiki Bhakti Hoi Please give me only pure devotion to your lotus feet. I am not asking for worldly comfort, name and fame, wealth, no quantity. Same thing, same Mahaprabhu said the same thing. We should not ask for anything. Ideally, sometimes if we ask, it's okay. Sacredness is okay too in the beginning. But gradually we should overcome that tendency to ask for anything. Whatever he comes with that, I am satisfied, happy. Yadu chala vasantushtu dandu atitaya vatsara. That's maturity of devotion. Now that is Chaitanya's instruction. 
when we pray to God, pray with humility, pray with the forbearance, and they pray with devotion. Trunada Pisuni Chena with humility, humble than a blade of grass. Tarura Pisishna, more forbearing than a tree. Amanina Manadera, without asking for respect for oneself, giving respect to all and everything. That way we should pray to God. Then when we pray to God, we should not ask for Dhanam, Janam, Sundarim, Kavita, all those things. Give me only pure. One thing we should ask, definitely we should ask pure devotion. Shuddha Bhakti. Tamarshya Padapade Ama Shuddha Bhakti Ra. That we should ask. Yes, we should ask for Shuddha Bhakti, not for anything else. Now, next two, three segments are very easy. Most of it is familiar to you from you are always reading Kathamrata and Gospel every day. So we can go through this seg next segment quickly. Sri Ramakrishna's teachings taken all taken from the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna Kathamrata. Go to 74. Sri Ramakrishna. If a man repeats the name of God, his body, mind and everything become pure, become pure. Everything becomes pure. Mind becomes pure when we repeat God's name. Body also becomes pure. Because what is body? Reflection of the mind. Subtle part of the body is the mind. Gross part of the mind is the body. So not two separate things. What happens in one affects either, affects the other. What happens in the body affects the mind. What happens in the mind affects the body. We know that one. So everything becomes, whole personality becomes purified. So God's name is the best instrument, best means to purify our personality. Make us free from karma, growth, and love, all those impurities. Then, 76 is important. Holy Mother also said the same thing. She is uh, here, Thakur Sri Ramakrishna says, No doubt a man experiences a little of the effect of Prarabdha. Prarabdha means past karma, then before, bearing fruit now. That which has begun to bear Prarabdha means that which has aram, jo aram ho chuka hai, shuru ho chuka hai. To give fruit it has begun. Prarabdha. Prarabdha karma. Past karma bearing fruit now. You can't change past karma. We did in the past. You can't go back in time and change what I did. Something did I did wrong. I cannot go back and correct it now. So I tell you with the result of that one. Hmm, this Prarabdha karma. But even that intensity of suffering will be reduced if you pray to God and repeat His name intensely with much devotion. But of a lot of repetition. But much of it, much of the suffering due to Prarabdha is cancelled by the power of God's name. Sadhamani Devi of also said the same thing in later we'll see. 77. Sri Ramakrishna. One should constantly repeat the name of God. The name of God is highly effective in the Kali Yuga. The practice of yoga is not possible in this age, for the life of man depends on food. Clap your hands while repeating God's name and the birds of your sin will fly away. Mind becomes pure. Peace will come, joy will come, acceptance will come, forbearance will come. By repeating God's name, simplest spiritual sadhana, complete in itself. Nothing else need be done if you do that one. Then, in Gita's earlier segment we saw whatever thought is uppermost in our minds, at the last moment of our life that it determines our future. Yam yam vapi smaran bhavam jajatyante galevaram 
Tam tamim me iti kaun ti hai sadat bhav bhav jat pasir bhi ram na se the same thing in 78 that you read 79 on page 13 the worldly minded people practice devotions japa and austerity only by fits and starts sporadically two three days we do japa four fifth day will miss like a pearl the sporadic practice is not consistent must be the every day consistency must be there worldly minded people practice devotion japa and austerity only by fits and starts but those who know nothing else but god repeat his name with every breath every breath constantly some always repeat mentally om rama even the father so the path of knowledge repeats so am i am he the other so stunts are always moving repeating the name of god one should remember and think of god constantly i have seen a couple of people who did that one not many one person i had seen he was a householder in uh, mumbai the pastor is not there now and he got a job in the indian post and telegraph department old days pnt and then used to repeat this rama's name all the time i didn't know him they knew his daughter and the daughter told me my father does it we were discussing this she said my father constantly repeats rama's name so I, but he was in india I didn't. then he came to this country of retirement to stay with his children here so then i went and met him and i asked him you are already uh, constantly repeating god's name how we do no about it when did you start that man said i started this practice when i was in high school somebody told him some of it came to know repeating god's name is the best spiritual practice so start repeating paramas name and he repeat all his life was repeating in between he became a householder children wife everything constantly i saw him doing that one all his life other people are there like that who can do that one. but we have to try we can't go become like them overnight but we have to start start our effort slowly it will happen by his grace our effort is necessary but by his grace it will be possible you the followers of the path of knowledge repeat so am i am he the other substance always moving later on we see the example of swami virajananda that comes in the next page constantly doing this japa amazing when we read the passage i do i wonder how it is even possible to do that one and he was president of the ramakrishna mathe mission so busy but he was repeating god's name sarada devi holy mother used to repeat mantra how many times a day 100000 times a day she used to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning in nahabat no no modern facility no bathroom no tap water nothing you know nahabat house small place cramped everything and water is brought from river no facilities just to cook and serve in the midst of all of that she would find time to repeat mantra 100000 times a day starting from 2 o'clock in the morning these are our shining examples 